Hi, I'm Christina Card, and I have been chatting with Abigail Ranga, and I also have been currently am taking her father's class on People Smart for Ministry. And the first thing I've learned that I have to admit only to fellow students is that I do talk too much. Um, when I get a chance to talk to someone else, I talk. Most of the time I'm alone. And I know I don't look sick right now. I spent a couple hours doing the hair, putting the, you know, the tees on and the extra makeup. So you can't tell. But I'm, if you read my story, I'm battling cancers. Still, and um, it's pretty much everywhere in my body, but we all know that the flesh is not of God, so I had some chemo, and I had some radiation, and the a lot of the cancer's in my esophagus, so I can't eat solid foods, and I have to have nourishment through a feeding tube, which gets put up my nose and down my throat. If any of you haven't experienced it, you don't want to have it done. Um, so there's days when I can't speak and there is no voice. And I spoke to Abigail yesterday for the first time, um, finding out that she wanted to do this video when all of you have had a week to practice your scriptures and your background, shall we say, and how you're going to speak or, or whatnot, um, I've had mm, just a little over 24 hours, if that, and my internet was down, and so I had over 200 emails. But let me cut to the chase, because I can ramble, let me tell you. I stopped having treatment. Um, I prayed a lot about it. And God said it was his turn to take care of me. And, of course, the doctors think I'm nuts. And it's, what are you going to do? And if you've read my story, um, two years ago, I've, I had a complete thyroidectomy. Um, they removed my thyroid. They told me that I w would have a very hoarse voice, that it would be deeper, um, that it wouldn't be as pleasant as I'm used to, and that I certainly would never sing. And when I talked to Abigail yesterday, I thought, oh, I'd love to share with everybody how I can sing. But my voice is still pretty raspy. Um, just because I did have that treatment the other day, so I think it might be kind of insulting to your ears. I know God would love it, but anyway, so I finally got online. I spoke to her the best that I could without a voice yesterday, um, with her asking us all to read the scripture and... Um, I had no voice, not, not at all, and it comes and it goes, and hopefully it won't go in the middle. So, you know we all have our cheat sheets. Usually I can remember the scriptures pretty quickly. Um, I am so honored that Abigail even said that she wanted to do this video, um, with me in mind. I called, um just to give her an idea on um, a video to help send out to the public, to churches um, all around the world, um, to help get donations to keep us in school, to keep us um, on the path that God wants us to be on. And because I talk too much, um, I told her I'd like to speak with her on the phone, and it was an instant connection with her. I'm sure we've all, you know, you have those moments when you get touched by the Holy Spirit, and I got touched when I talked to her for the first time 
and it was not to have this happen. I am very humbled and very honored, and when I found out about this, it just, I dropped to my knees in tears, praying to God, um, thanking Him, because my entire life I've been dedicated to the gospel, to the word of God. Um, I've been sick my entire life. I've been given de a death sentence so many times, it's ridiculous. And doctors are there for us to use them. And I know that, but when I pray about it, God will tell me when it's time for me to rely on him. And this being my fourth battle, I believe, fourth with um, cancer that is, excuse me, um, well, like they say, all of them life-threatening. I stopped treatment a couple weeks ago. The only treatment I do still have is every now and then um, a tube shoved down my nose. <laughs> Isn't that pleasant? For um, nourishment, for food. Drinking in shore all the time. This is my joke, okay, just to make you laugh. Because when I was a child, I always said I wanted to be a smile maker. And so that's, I've done so many things. The last thing I did was making jewelry, which after 15 years, I had a store. And I was very successful with it. And I got sick. But anyway, I'm on a liquid diet. You're supposed to drink Ensure. I'm supposed to drink Ensure. Um, it gets delivered to the house. Now, I don't know if any of you have had to drink Ensure as your only nourishment three times a day. But it gives you horrible gas. And how is someone supposed to stand in front of, say, a congregation? That's what most of our dreams are, knowing that at any time, you could clear the church and <laughs> have no control over it. And so I suppose it's just as well that I'm alone. So now anyway, the scriptures that she would like for us to read, I usually wear glasses and on my webcam, which is, this is the first time I've used it, there's a reflection in them, and um, it's of the wall behind me. If I, I'm, sh if you can see it, that's kind of silly. You can see it. Um, Abby will probably show you some other pictures, but every wall in my room is covered with the Word of God, um, or with encouraging quotes and whatnot. It's even though I believe God's going to heal me, I still have prepared my place. Um, so to say, and it soothes me to be able to say, you know, James 4.8 is on the wall. The writing is on the wall in my room, and um, this is what I do. I ran out of room, and I actually started now in the bathroom. Um, I've got four scriptures on the floor. And so I need to stop because I'm a renter, not an owner. The book of Romans is so appropriate. Abigail could not have chosen um, a better book in the Bible. I'm sure a lot of you know that it's considered to be one of the best books in the Bible. And for me, it is my favorite book in the Bible because it lays down the law. Um, Paul, Apostle Paul, is, is writing to a church in Rome, and the letter is basically divided into two parts, and, you know, he has a greeting, and then he tells you what it's about, um, and we learn a lot about the love that God has for us, and the things we can overcome, and that's very appropriate for me now. And so... I had a lot of joy with reading the six scriptures. I used to know them by heart, 
and um, because of my health, I have trouble with my mind, so I have to read them, but I'm going to do my best to maintain the 100% eye contact that she asked for, but you can't see my cheat sheets, and really, I can't either because I don't have my glasses on. Thank you very much, Abby. Um, it starts with Romans 8. 28, I believe it is, um, yeah, 828, and we know that in all things, uh, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. What then shall we say in response to these things? It, if God is for us, then who can come against us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Sh shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine, um, nakedness or danger or sword? No. In all these things... We are more than conquerors, because through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels or demons, neither present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Kudos to you, Abigail. You are a wonderful young woman who has such a bright future ahead of you. It's so magnificent you started your walk with God at such a young age. I've been pushing away my entire life, but now it burns me when I'm supposed to be working on it and I'm not. God puts that spark there that says, do it. So I'm going 100%. And I hope that all of you don't get discouraged. Um... Because this is a magnificent opportunity for all of us as Christians, either young or old, to start our walk with God, to spread the gospel as the Bible wants us to do. And I have been trying for years, but um, because I couldn't afford it, you know, it's expensive. Um, I have four children, and that's where you put the money. I don't like to live because of money, but sometimes it comes into play. So I am a vision partner, and I am a disabled vision partner, which doesn't make me better than anybody, but I give as much as I can every month, and I hope that this video will inspire some of you to do so, even if it's a dollar. Um, it all counts. Um, we are getting an education that would otherwise cost us thousands and thousands of dollars. And Henry Ranga and his whole team, um, all of our professors, are giving us something that money can't, money can't buy, and that's a free education. We need to take hold of it and realize just what we have. Never be ungrateful because you're ill or because you get discouraged and don't have someone to talk to. Talk to God. He'll get you through this course. The enemy will come against you. The more you give, the harder you try, it seems the enemy comes against you. But don't let him. 
talk to God, put the armor on every day, and don't ever let anybody discourage you. Losing a friend and planting a seed are two things that people put together and it's a hard choice. When it comes to God, losing a friend to save someone, as we say, to lead them to the Lord, to give always and forgive and to love is what the Bible and the gospel is all about. And those friends will come back. I think it's God's way of giving us unlimited access um, that's provided for us through CLI and uninhibited access because our friends are a little bit intimidated by the life we're choosing to live. But those friends will come back when they see you, when they hear you, and the rewards for planting a seed are far beyond anything you can gain from a friend that you try to keep. Invest your time in yourself first. Don't be a people pleaser. Get your education here. Get it for free. Give what you can. And I hope that churches and organizations and even people who aren't students will see that the Christian Leadership Institute is an amazing program that has grown every year and given so much back to society through your generous donations that I am honored to be a part of it. I'm honored to be a student. I'm honored to be loved. I'm honored to be noticed for loving God. And most of all, I'm honored to have all of you as friends. Abigail, I can't thank you enough for seeing the real me and letting me share who that person is. This is the beginning for me of something wonderful. My favorite scripture, Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ, for it's he that strengthens me. I hope he strengthens you too. Amen.